All right, not meant to be tonight. John Schaefer with you here. It is the wrap-up show. First place in the Mountain West was on the line, obviously, this evening in Logan and Utah State. Edges out the Aztecs in the end, 68-63, a game that San Diego State trailed in for most of the night, made a furious second-half comeback, pulled to within one. Utah State had to take a timeout on its home floor. But in that final four and a half minutes, Utah State just made plays, and San Diego State um, comes up on the wrong side of a 68-63 final score. Uh, we'll get into all of it over the next, let's say, 30 or so minutes. Just wanted to be here for Aztec fans following you know, a tough loss. It really was a, a tough loss tonight for San Diego State. So if you are here, if you wouldn't mind subscribing, I've got year-round content for you. I, I assume everyone can hear me, by the way, right now. Um, smash the like button for me if you wouldn't mind. You can follow me on social media. At John Schaefer, J-O-N-S-C-H-A-E-F-F-E-R. And uh, appreciate the Super Chats. Click the dollar sign below the chat box. I'll get to all of your Super Chats here tonight. And appreciate those that have become members as well by clicking the Join button down below. So there's a lot of places you can go, obviously, following this game. And I think the immediate reaction, obviously, with fans, because I just did a post-game show on the radio, is people are you know, they're frustrated and they're upset. There was a lot on the line in this game. The winner with an inside track, obviously, to win a Mountain West regular season title. And right now that's Utah State, not San Diego State, because of the work they did tonight at home in securing the 68-63 to win. With all that being said, there's a lot of basketball to be played both ways. If the Aztecs would have won tonight, it didn't guarantee them anything when it comes to a regular season title. Losing tonight doesn't assure San Diego State of of being unable to secure like at least a share for example, of a Mountain West title. Does it make it harder? Yeah, it absolutely makes it harder. And you look at the schedules for these two teams and you could argue that Utah State has the more favorable schedule and they've got a game up right now in the standings. They've got New Mexico at home as their hardest remaining game. Aztecs still have two remaining road games. Fresno State last year, you may recall it, you may not, 45-43 Aztec win in a rock fight. Uh, They still have to go to Vegas where UNLV this year has – you know, I mean, they've given some teams fits. They've had some heartbreaking losses. Utah State at home for UNLV. The, the loss the other night to Nevada, their rival, where I think Nevada closed on a 10-0 run. So, I mean, there aren't really any layups. I mean, you do have San Jose State at home, which San Diego State obviously needs to win. But you have Boise State on senior night. And um, the challenging league schedule continues. And that's what's going to continue here down the stretch for SDSU. There are no gimmies here. And that includes Saturday night in Fresno. So the Aztecs need to regroup, turn the page, whatever it is, and find a way to pick up a road win when they play Saturday night against the Fresno State Bulldogs. But before we talk about Saturday night, we can obviously get into this over the next 30 minutes or so. I mean, you think about a game like this, obviously, you know, Darius Brown hitting five threes. He was a 35% three-point shooter. He goes five of nine. That's crucially important. And he played brilliantly. He came off a bad game against Colorado State, a 20-point loss for Utah State. At Moby, he bounces back with 25 points. And then Greg Osibor did a little bit of everything, whether it was scoring, rebounding, or passing. Because when San Diego State did double, he made them pay for that. When they didn't double, he got some entry passes low in the post, and he was able to score from that position. Despite everything, I mean, you're talking about the environment, the elevation, first places on the line. You know, Utah State looking for that marquee quad one home win. San Diego State looking for that marquee quad one road win. Despite all of it, San Diego State from 10 down makes a run. They pulled it within one. And you think about the events that occurred after that. Like, think about it. Remember, out of the timeout, San Diego State was playing some good defense. Micah Parrish, like, deflected a ball into the backcourt. Remember that? But couldn't come up with it. And then Utah State raced into the front court, missed a three, but there was an offensive rebound to make it a three-point game. I think there was an offensive rebound miss, another offensive rebound put back to make it a three-point game. Next possession. For San Diego State, trailing by three. They had that wide-open three look from Parrish that he passed up, threw it inside to Ladee, who threw it outside to Saunders, who then missed an open three in a three-point game. It was still a three-point game. I'm trying to remember. I think the next offensive possession was Lamont Butler um, being called for a charge, going into Greg Osibor in the paint. It was still a three-point game when they turned it over, I think, when Miles Bird tried to find Jaden Ladee in the mid post or in the high post. And then there was another missed three in there as well. Maybe that corner three. And then, of course, the biggest play of the game, arguably, was with the shot clock expiring, second and third opportunities. The ball was, like, tipped out by false lev for Utah State to Darius Brown on that left wing, and he drilled a three with the shot clock at one to make it a six-point game. So 
Utah State made plays down the stretch. San Diego State did not. And that was the difference between winning and losing here tonight. Because you look at some of the numbers and you say, well, you know what? You can live with one more made free throw than Utah State. You can live with 20 points off turnovers to seven. You can live with just four offensive rebounds allowed. San Diego State was plus three on the glass. They had four more offensive rebounds. San Diego State's bench outscored Utah State's bench 28-6. Right? Like all these things you look at, like, yeah, you know, that's – a recipe for maybe a road win, but what wasn't is San Diego State couldn't get their footing, couldn't find their footing outside. Three of 19, not good enough, 15.8%. Utah State, seven of 22. I mean, you could argue that's the game right there. Darius Brown hitting five threes, no Aztec hitting more than one was a big part of this game. I mean, he had five of their seven. They're not a great three-point shooting team. They don't take a ton. They don't make a ton. And they hit seven tonight, which is over their season average of about six made threes. And they didn't shoot them at a great clip, seven to 22. But again, good enough. I think if, you know, if San Diego State, as opposed to three of 19, is five of 19, they probably win. Even four of 19, maybe it comes down to a final possession, something like that. But the Aztecs, you know, which the team that had been, you know, San Diego State's had some big games from outside, specifically at home, but not tonight on the road. Not tonight on the road. And Jaden Ledee did everything he could. I mean, it looked like early on he was kind of battling through the elevation and everything. I think he played like 13 or 14 minutes in the first half. He might have played all 20 minutes in the second half. And he had some big moments for this team. He had 23 points. And, you know, Reese Waters, I thought, played well off the bench. Miles Bird, I thought, played well off the bench. And, you know, just a couple of plays. Again, the final four and a half minutes, I think the only field goal the Aztecs had after pulling to within one was the Bird triple, essentially, at the buzzer with two seconds left. Um, so... Again, there's a lot of different ways we can go. I'd love to hear from Aztec fans. I know a lot of people are commenting right now. Um, if you're watching live, if you're here on replay, you can put your comments down below. If you're here live, we can get to some of your um, comments here in the live chat as well. One thing I will say, you know, and I'm, I'm sure there'll be some, you know, comments here critical of whatever happened here tonight. And that's all fair and reasonable. But, you know, some of the stuff that I had tonight on the text line about Lamont Butler shouldn't start and – like all this stuff, like guys, like Lamont's coming off one of his better games, 11 second half points against New Mexico, the pickpocket of Jalen House. Um, not everyone's going to have a great, you know, a good night, even every single night. It's tough on the road. It's tough. Utah State's good. They're 22 and five. Like they're really good. They might be the top seed in the tournament. Was it Lamont Butler's best game? No. Was it Micah Parrish's best game? No. But I mean, it happens, especially against good teams. This isn't, you know, losing to a team ranked 330th in the net on the road. This is losing to a team with very comparable metrics. Utah State was a three and a half point favorite when this game closed. They won by five points. I mean, this was within the margin of what could have happened, obviously, tonight. And, you know, the Aztecs got off to a slow start. That's something that has kind of plagued them here recently. I think they've trailed five minutes in in seven consecutive games. And then they fought their way back into it, as they typically do. They took a couple of three-point leads. Utah State closed the first half well, had a five-point lead. Started the second half really well. It looked to be teetering. San Diego State goes down 10 a couple of times. But the Aztecs clawed into it, made plays. Jaden Ledee specifically made some plays. They pulled it within one. Utah State takes a timeout on its floor. And then we went through what transpired. The late shot clock moment after Parrish knocks the ball into the backcourt and the offensive rebound. The Darius Brown late shot clock situation off a couple of offensive rebounds. The you know, missed opportunities for San Diego State at the offensive end. It'll happen. Would you prefer them to have another marquee win on the road in the league? Yes, absolutely. Was this an important game to win a Mountain West regular season title? Yes, absolutely. But not all of your goals are tied up in the Mountain West regular season. Some of your goals are. I just talked about this on the radio. And while it's important to win important games on the road, again, it's not the only determining factor. Do they need to win games on the road between now and and Selection Sunday, yeah, it would be valuable. I mean, to win at Fresno, to win at UNLV would be valuable. If they want to have a chance at a share of a Mountain West title, yeah, absolutely. They need to win some games on the road. But remember, come NCAA tournament time, for whatever this means, it doesn't mean they're going to win games. It doesn't mean they're going to lose games. They're not playing Utah State and Logan in the NCAA tournament. They've been a very good neutral court team. They have a win at Gonzaga this year. They've been an excellent home team. So a lot of teams – if you look at college basketball this year, have struggled on the road, especially against really good teams. And this, you might say, what's the difference between this year and last year? Why can't they win on the road this year as opposed to last year? The league's better. The league is flat out better this year. And that's why ESPN.com this morning had six Mountain West teams in the NCAA tournament, the same number as the Big Ten, more than the ACC, more than the Big East. 
for more than the Pac-12. This is played out like a power league in 2024. That doesn't excuse not winning on the road. That doesn't mean they're not capable of winning on the road, but it explains that this league is playing out differently than maybe it's ever played out in the 25-plus year history of the Mountain West Conference. Um, all right, I want to get to this first uh, Super of the Night from Kevin, loyal viewer, supporter. Appreciate you being here, Kevin. Really do. I haven't read your comment as of yet, but appreciate you being here. He says, I still take issue every time you downplay the regular season title, um, which is fine. I mean, we can we can agree to disagree. He goes on to say, as for tonight, Aggies made one or two more timely plays and shot better from three. I'm not trying to downplay it. I'm really not. I would have preferred, obviously, that they won this game, San Diego State, and were in position to claim a share or an outright league title. And we've seen that play out. I would just say this. The titles, regular season, and Mountain West tournament are all valuable, and they hang in the rafters for forever at Viejas Arena, and they recognize you know, accomplishments, and they should be celebrated. I'm just saying that there's multiple ways. I don't even know what this saying means, but there's multiple ways to skin a cat, so to speak, um, because it's a little bit like baseball, like I've talked about before. Like You don't have to win a division to win a World Series. You don't have to win a regular season title to get to a sweet 16. I always ask it like this way. Look at it this way. And I mean, again, I think multiple people might have multiple answers. Would you prefer San Diego State wins a regular season title but loses in the round of 64 as opposed to finishes third place in the Mountain West regular season but makes the round of 32? Or wins a title, makes the round of 32, doesn't win a title, makes the round of 16? Like To me, the true measure, the way teams are judged in this sport is what happens in March. Um, don't get me wrong. This matters. They want it badly. They want to win titles. Look at last year. They pulled off the double. Regular season, tournament, made it to you know, a national championship game. All of that was an amazing accomplishment. I'm just saying that one doesn't take away the other, so to speak, or guarantee the other. You can win a regular season and lose early in the first round. You cannot win a regular season and make a deep run. And there's no direct correlation is what I would say. Um, does San Diego State still have more to prove throughout the course of this regular season? I'm sure they would tell you yes, absolutely. I mean, they're playing for NCAA tournament seating. They're playing for Mountain West tournament seating. I mean, there's, what, seven teams within one loss of each other right now in the Mountain West? San Diego State could finish anywhere from the top seed in the Mountain West tournament to the seventh seed in the Mountain West tournament. And that's the same for all those teams, essentially. A couple of the teams are better situated because they only have four league losses, Boise State, and Utah State right now, but those other five teams are jockeying, and that includes San Diego State. And that's why Saturday night, as important as this was, and it was important, Saturday night's just as important against Fresno State to find a way to secure a road win. All right, let me get to uh, another super that has rolled in, and thank you again, Kevin. T-Mac, appreciate you. Says, uh, I think we are only one of five NCAA Division One teams that only have quad one losses. We only deserve the good times uh, if stick with our team during the bad times. I mean – the good of it is, yes, all of the losses are against highly ranked teams. Um, and the other side of the good of it is the Aztecs have secured some quad one wins along the way, right? Utah State at home, New Mexico at home, Gonzaga on the road, Colorado State, right? Add them all up. Um, would you prefer to, to turn some of those quad one losses into quad one wins? Yeah. I mean, everyone would say that, of course. Um, but it's easier said than done. So it's still a very clean resume. The selection committee rewarded it based on what they said on Saturday, that San Diego State's resume at that point was worthy of a number four seed. Does it change off this game? It may. It may not. No matter what they said Saturday, there was still going to be a lot of basketball to be played. And we all knew it was going to be tough to run the table coming out of Saturday because the league is just too good. It's hard to imagine anyone running the, t the table over the final month of the season if you include the Mountain West Tournament within the league. It's a possibility, but again, it's not easy. For me right now, what matters most is winning the games you got to get. Got to win in Fresno. Got to be San Jose State at home. Got to do everything in your power to pick up a road win at UNLV. Got to get home for senior night and win, right? I mean, ideally 4-0 there, but again, easier said than done. Um, hopefully no worse than 3-1 over those four games. Um, and, you know, also along the way, you think about what's to come here in the last couple of weeks of the season. What's interesting is they still have a chance to work on themselves. They've got their second bye coming after, is it the San Jose State game? Yeah, I think it is, before UNLV on the road and then Boise State at home. And then they're going to they're gonna have another handful of days because their senior night's on a Friday and the Mountain West tournament isn't until at earliest the next Wednesday. So they'll have another handful of days 
to work on themselves. So this isn't a finished product. It's not a finished product. The Aztecs were just coming off their best week of the season. Home wins over Colorado State, New Mexico. They lost to a good team on the road tonight in a hostile environment, in a game that, you know, they didn't finish the way they'd hoped to finish. And that's happened a couple times this year on the road. But is it an end-all, be-all? Is it um, anything more than that? I don't know. I really don't know. We'll find out in the days and weeks and, you know, month plus ahead for SDSU. So thank you, T-Mac. Appreciate your super chat. All right, let me just get to um, some of the comments that have rolled in, like uh, Force Ghost Fabio, who says, I believe that we will win out. Kevin saying this is his therapy, mine too. And I'm the one <laughs> that's talking about it. Um, Bianca says, I need someone to be honest about our guards during away games. I mean, I don't even, listen, I mean, <laughs> what can you say? I mean, Darius Brown's a really good player. He's been in the NCAA tournament a couple of times with Montana State. He's a fifth-year player. He played really well tonight. He was one of the best players on the floor, if not the best player on the floor. That's a credit to him. That's, that's what it is. It's a credit to him. T Fuel says, Way to go, John. You are such a hard worker. Thank you, T Fuel. Appreciate you being here. Gustavo says, Hi, John. Another tough loss in the road. It happened against Boise, Colorado State, Nevada, Utah State, that we were up, down by one of the final minutes and we lost. What do you think is happening closing down the games? You know, each one is unique into itself, is what I would say. Um, you know, would you like to finish one of those off? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you'd almost think that the odds would tell you that that would have occurred over the course of one of those games. I would say, like I kind of was alluding to earlier, I would trade those losses for a close win, like in an NCAA tournament game, potentially even in a Mountain West tournament, you know, championship game or semifinal game, potentially. But um, I think there's a number of factors. I think the teams you mentioned are all good and even better on their home floor. I mean, Utah State's lost once at home all year. So the teams you just referenced are – not just NCAA tournament teams, they're really good at home. Most NCAA tournament teams are really good at home. And the Aztecs, for whatever reason, in some of these games have not made plays that other teams have made. Is that because other teams are feeding off the home crowd? Is it because of officiating? Is it because of, well, that's just basketball, things happen? I, it's, a, it's a combination of everything, is what I would say. It's a combination of everything. I mean, Nevada was probably the the most winnable game leading inside of the final minute of regulation, leading by four in overtime, but it just wasn't meant to be, but that's not to say it's not going to be meant to be against UNLV or in one of these final two home regular season games or in Vegas during the Mountain West tournament. That's what I would say about that. I mean, Utah state's been really good in close games this year, right? Are they seven and zero in games decided by five points or less? That doesn't guarantee that'll be the case in the Mountain West tournament or the next time they're on the floor on the floor or the next time, in the NCAA tournament. It just doesn't work like that. Uh, Rich says, key for me was 313. Butler drives and is fouled by Brown and falls into Asabor for an offensive foul. He looks back looking for the foul, but it went the other way. Then the Aggies go up by six. Yeah, that was important. I agree with you. There was contact before he ran into Asabor. Um, I knew it would be an offensive foul once Asabor went down, assuming there wasn't a foul earlier. Um, but it's a good point. That was one of a series of keys. There was, again, the turnover. Bird looking for Ladee. There was the miss three when they had a couple of open looks. There were the second chances for Utah State, right? Like there was all those combinations. You add like five things up and it's a Utah State win. I think if you get like two of the five, you don't even necessarily need three of the five, you may win the game. But not tonight for SDSU. Uh, Gary says, hi, John. We played well, just not great. You review the stats in the air, which showed that they actually played well. Utah State was just a little bit better. Asabar is an excellent passer. He's outstanding. You're right, Gary. I mean, you know, again, is this San Diego State's best performance? I think they would tell you no. But they did enough to hang around, which is something they typically do. I think they've only been out of really one game all year, and that was New Mexico on the road. But, you know, Asabar is a tough, you know, a tough assignment for a couple of reasons. I mean, because of his offensive capabilities to score, but also because of his passing. And they've got weapons around him, specifically Darius Brown. I think – that alone, that combination at home is pretty lethal and speaks to, you know, why they've only lost one time all year inside the spectrum. Uh, Bill says, tough road loss, but credit Utah State. The Aggies made the plays and earned the win. The Aztecs played hard but didn't do enough to get it done. Need to play better the rest of the way. No, I think it's a fair assessment. Exactly. It's a tough road loss. You move on. You watch the film. You make adjustments. You try to improve off of it. And you hope you're better on Saturday night when you're in Fresno. Um, as opposed to, you know, again, it's going to be different. Not to say the Fresno is not capable. I think they are. There's the familiarity 
Um, I think they're capable, but it's just different. You're not playing at elevation. You're not playing in front of the crowd. They're actually on their bye week. Uh, is that advantage Fresno State? Or you can believe it. San Diego State's got the full complement of rest. They're playing Tuesday, then Saturday. I don't think you need more time than that to prepare, even with the travel. So we'll see what happens Saturday night and if they can get the sour taste out of their mouth. But, yeah, it, it feels big and maybe even bigger because – Again, you're in the top 25. First place is on the line. You were inside the top 16 in the bracket reveal. Like It feels like you've added all the way up to this moment, but I knew heading in that the season wouldn't be defined on this. Now, the regular season title could have been defined on this, but the season alone is not going to be defined based on this one result, in my opinion. Maybe some people disagree with that. RS is bad game plan, but doesn't follow up, so we'll see what that means. Um, Rich says tough loss, but we beat this team on a neutral floor. John, you're right about the text line on the post game. Did they watch the game or just look at the box? I mean, again, I, I get it. People get frustrated. I get being a fan. I really, really, really do. But, you know, being as critical as some people are over like Lamont Butler's game is like, guys, I mean, he's coming off a couple of like, oh, you know, he's not playing at either end. I mean, did you watch Nevada or excuse me? Did you watch Colorado State? Did you watch New Mexico? Isaiah Stevens didn't score in the second half. Credit Lamont Butler. Uh, Jalen House, Lamont Butler played brilliantly against in the second half. And I'll play them on offense in the second half. Tonight was not his best game, but that's a credit to Darius Brown and Utah State and their game plan. Um, I don't think we should be discrediting Lamont Butler because he didn't have his best game. I mean, if are you tell me the difference tonight was Lamont Butler, you know, going 0 for 5 from the floor as opposed to 2 for 5 from the floor? I don't think it's as simplistic as that. Uh, Bianca wants to know, can you please talk about uh, talk to us about Butler's games and what is going on with him. He's a great player, but doesn't seem to show up during road games. I mean, I, I haven't looked at home road splits with Lamont this year. I guess I could do a deeper dive. But here's what I would say. The road this year is as hard as it's ever been, not just in college basketball. And there's metrics that would support that, like kind of the um, parity that's going on in Division One, especially in, in league play. But to further that point, think about everything working against San Diego State. On the road, you're coming off a national championship game, target on your back. You um, are playing against a league that's going to have potentially five other teams in the NCAA tournament. So it's a harder road conference schedule than you've ever played. You always have the target on your back because you're San Diego State. Right now you're inside the top 25. Utah State's coming off a 20-point road loss to Colorado State. If they don't defend home court tonight, when are they going to do it? I'm not saying they would have been on the bubble with the loss tonight, but they might have been approaching bubble territory. This was the win they had to have. San Diego State needed it too. And I've said that four or five times this year. It just feels like there's been a lot of circumstances where you're facing someone on the road where they really, really, really need it. And again, both teams really, really, really needed it tonight. But Utah State's one of those two teams. <laughs> so it's a credit to them as well. Uh, Daniel says, boys will regroup and finish the year strong heading into the Mountain West Tournament. Go Aztecs. Thank you, Daniel. Rich says, Lobos will beat Utah State in the finale. We can get that game back. Yeah, I mean, you just don't know. I mean, I've watched enough college basketball to know that none of these teams are invincible. None of these teams are unbeatable. Um, and that includes Utah State. And that includes everyone in the league. Yes, absolutely. That's po- Listen, Utah State could give a game back. Maybe they don't. Utah State could lose to New Mexico. They could lose to someone else. Honestly, maybe they don't, but control what you control now. You can't worry about what happened tonight if you're San Diego State. Don't let Utah State beat you again. Just worry about, review it, learn from it, improve off it, and get ready for Saturday. Gustavo says Butler's 100% a starter. When he scores more than 10 points, we win. He'll bounce back, but definitely he had a bad game tonight. The same with Micah. Both players will be at their best in March, believe. Yeah, Micah struggled with the shot recently. He passed up that three. That's not something you typically see from Micah. Again, is that the difference? That's where people go, you know, they get so um, overly enamored with one play, one moment, because what happens is it adds up to one player, one moment. You think like, oh, that one shot with two minutes to play in the game, that was the difference between winning and losing. Well, we don't really know that. It it may have been, or it may not have been. But despite Micah and Lamont struggling, they were one of 12 on the floor tonight. Obviously, the numbers speak for themselves. Despite that, I think if you secure a defensive rebound, right, if you avoid a turnover, you may still win the game. So it's not like all of it can be, you know, summarized based on one play, uh, whether it was made or not made at any one juncture of the game. Again, in my opinion. 
Uh, Kevin says, preface this by saying officiating wasn't a factor, but wish I knew what kicked off the waters technical uh, when I've seen antics from house go completely unpunished. Yeah, I didn't like that. I'm with you, Kevin. I didn't like that. Um, it, it was um, what I would deem like a soft technical. I mean, what do you say? Jarred with someone in the crowd or said something briefly to a player. That happens on like every single possession of every single game. I look up though, free throw shooting was even. Each team had 15 attempts. San Diego State had one additional make. Was it important? Sure, but there's so many important plays. There was a technical against Utah State that led to four makes for San Diego State at the free throw line as well. So some of it kind of evens out in the laundry. Um, okay, I'm going to get back to the chat in a moment. Going to be with you for another 15 minutes, let's say. While we have a uh, break in the action as San Diego State falls again tonight to Utah State, 68-63. I do want to remind our viewers about my buddy Eric Lanier at Higher Impact Financial. If you're looking for a financial planner, look no further than Eric. Click that link in the description down below. Set up a free 15-minute consultation with Eric. This is something I recently did. I think you're really going to enjoy getting to know Eric, and he's going to make life easier for you with your financial planning needs, whatever it is, tax purposes, retirement, whatever questions you have, he can help answer and he can really make your future a lot more clear when it comes to your finances. So again, whatever your financial needs are, click the link in the description down below, set up a free 15 minute consultation with Eric Lanier. Let him know I sent you. And again, thank you, Eric, for your support of the wrap up show presented by Higher Impact Financial. Eric is a huge Aztec fan based in Southern California. He would love to connect with you if you have any financial needs, he would love to connect with you. Again, it's a free 15 minute consultation with Eric Lanier. I did it and he has really set up my family um, for a path for financial success. So thank you, Eric, for your uh, time and for your support. All right, let's get back to this here. Um, LL says SDSU road environment has been insane. Tough for any team to win 16 and 0 in home neutral is a good sign for Mount West tournament in March. I like the perspective that you provide there, LL. Um, Again, nothing guarantees anything. <laughs> it's a stupid way of saying it. But, like, if San Diego State could be perfect on the road this year and lose in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Or they could be – you know what I mean? Like, it's hard to really predict in a one-and-done format, but I agree with what you're saying, that the environments that San Diego State has struggled most in this year aren't replicated in an NCAA tournament. Now, not to say it's not a challenging environment. It is. And you might face some somewhat hostile crowds. I go back to last year, Alabama and Louisville. That was an Alabama, Alabama home game. Probably 70% of the crowd was rooting for Alabama. So, you know, there's some unique environments. And don't get me wrong. There's a, adversity and challenges and uh, pressures. It's the NCAA tournament or even the Mountain West tournament. But but it's a good point. Like, you don't, you don't face all of that. Like, you don't have, like, 10,000 against five, that feeling in any other setting than league play. Like you, you get it in Logan, you get it at the pit, you get it in some of these really tough environments, but you don't get it in the first round of the NCAA tournament in Spokane. Like San Diego State, I'm making it up, uh, you, you know, San Diego State Akron in a 5-12 game. I'm not saying that there's some guarantee, and I don't think LL saying it either. I think it sets them up for success. It's not a guarantee that you win, but you're not playing in some hostile road environment. You're playing on a neutral floor where you just have to outplay an opponent. You don't have to outplay the officials and outplay the crowd and outplay the elevation and outplay the environment. So I, I do think it's an interesting way to look at it. I mean, there's so many questions heading into this, you know, um, Mount West tournament and NCAA tournament just across the country and across the landscape of the league. I mean, you, where Brian Dutcher is absolutely at his best is that he maintains a level of consistency with the media and with his team that allows his team to deal with the adversity that presents itself over the course of the season. He doesn't get too high. He doesn't get too low. This is just part of it. They're 20 and seven, nine and five in the league. They're in the third or fourth best league in the country this year. This is just, you just got to see your way through it. Avoid the losing streak, continue in the right direction and get to the Mountain West tournament as highly seated as possible to hopefully make a run in that Mountain West tournament and then set you up for the NCAA tournament. RS says, love throwing the ball into the D, but if it's not there, it's not there. Got to get more production from others. Yeah, I think that's a fair point at times. I mean, you can't force feed it to the point of a turnover. And if it's not there, you can't spend 25 seconds trying to get it there and then, you know, be caught with five seconds on the on the shot clock. You know, at the end of the day, I mean, Jaden was a big part side. 23 of 63 points is a, is a big percentage. He only had 13 field goal attempts. He's, 
he's just so crucial, obviously. And on any given night, he's capable of going for like 30 and 13 that, of course, he has to get involved. And even if he doesn't for a six or eight minute stretch, he still finds ways to score 20 points. So he's, he's an incredible player and you understand making him the focal point. Uh, but obviously he needs help as well. You're not going to win with one player's effort. I mean, it helps you win, but it's not the only reason you win one player's performance. Jeff says, uh, Aztecs had no problem getting Ladi the ball at the free throw line, and he was unstoppable. See him down the stretch. They tried to force him lower in the block. Oh, I got you. Like feeding him um, at the nail or at the free throw line. I understand what you're saying there. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know. I'd have to go back and watch. It, some of it is like, um, I don't know. It all like just jumbles together in my brain. I've watched so many possessions, so many plays, so many moments, so many games. Talked about it so often that – in a game like this that is frustrating, it's easy to kind of forget some of the things that frustrate you over the course of the game. And Joey's right. Yes, absolutely. I think if they're 5-19, and 19, they win. That's not a great percentage, 5-19. and 19. They were 2 of 18 before Miles Bird hit one with two seconds left when the game was decided. So, yeah, absolutely. I agree. Uh, he goes on to say the Aztecs will beat Utah State in the Mountain West Tournament. I'd love to see it again. I think it would be a great game. I really do. I believe it would be a close game. And I think San Diego State would have an excellent shot on a neutral floor, uh, not at elevation. Um, with a 50-50 crowd of winning that game. I agree with that. And then he goes on to say, Aztecs need Fresno State to beat Utah State. I don't even – so let me see. Utah State uh, basketball schedule. I'll look that up real quick. I mean, so Utah State – what's tonight, guys? Tuesday. Utah State's off for a week before going to Fresno. So Fresno's upcoming homestand. They're off for a week now. They go San Diego State, Utah State at home. Interesting. Then Utah State has Air Force at home. I mean, they should win that game. They should win at Fresno, by the way. Um, they should win at San Jose State March 6th, and then they have New Mexico at home. Again, none of this is like a guarantee everything's going to be a 30-point win. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a single-digit margin against Fresno State. I wouldn't be surprised if San Jose State could give them a game for 30 minutes um, in Northern California. And I wouldn't be surprised if New Mexico beat Utah State. Um, but again, they've got the game advantage. So right now, advantage Aggies. I think that's fair, and I think that's what most people would tell you at this uh, point in the season. Gustavo says, huge game at UNLV. We need that Q2 road win. We got a week off before this game. Just, uh, But first, we need to win at Fresno and versus San Jose State. We need to finish top five to get the bye on the first round of the Mountain West. I'm with you. That, that to me, is critically important. You know, uh, one seed's great, but if you can't secure the one seed, just get one in the top five is what I would say. Because once you – who cares? On a neutral floor, you're going to like San Diego State against anyone, right? You're going to like your chances – but you don't want to play a fourth game. You don't want to be the sixth seed or lower. You don't want to play the, a fourth game. It's hard enough. Someone's going to win three games in three days. Is anyone going to win four and four? I mean, that's a really tall task and a big ask of a team. So I'm with you. I'm with you. Kevin says that Tremel to Bird alley Yeah, we haven't talked about that. That was straight fire. I do think a few times late we made big plays, dunks, but celebrated rather than getting back on defense. Love for the guys to have fun but need to stay focused. I'd have to go back and watch Kevin. Yeah, there were a couple of big plays. I remember like a pal slam, um, you know, maybe a waters jumper with his foot on the line when he got teed up. That Again, just one of those nights where it's like on 50-50 plays or things that normally you get, they don't go your way. And it feels like that's happened a lot on the road. And maybe that's because you're on the road and the environment and the teams you're playing. But again, I don't, I don't watch a game like this and Say to myself, man, this this proved the point. San Diego State isn't good enough. They can't do it. I don't. I didn't see that. That's not what this game screams to me. It just isn't at all. None of the games have. Not one game this year have I seen something that leads me down a path of why they can't get something accomplished. What I have seen is San Diego State playing in front of great crowds on the road in tough environments against good teams get beat. Whether that's BYU, Grand Canyon, some of these Mountain West road games, but. That's the same result that 98% of teams in the nation would get. I'm not saying every team in the nation would have lost the road games that San Diego State has lost, but a lot of them would have. And a lot of those teams wouldn't have some of the marquee wins that the Aztecs have on their resume. Uh, T Fuel says the difference was they made their threes and we didn't. Yeah, sometimes it's, you know, sometimes it's as simple as that. I don't know if it was the only determining factor, but it was. Yeah, it may have been. I mean, it may have been. Sometimes it's as simple as that. And tonight may have been as simple as that. Gary, appreciate you. He says, a question for Aztec Nation. Which is the worst loss? UConn losing by 16 to Creighton or our five-point loss to Utah State? It's a, it's a great point, Gary. I mean, obviously UConn has 
built in a buffer based on their performance. They had, what, 114 or so consecutive. Ever since they got Donovan Klingon back, they were clearly playing with the best team in the country, if not one of the top two or three with Purdue and Houston. But no team is is invincible. Or, 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 you know, most teams are susceptible to life on the road in their league. Um, UConn has lost at Seton Hall this year, bubble team. Who else did they lose to, guys, on the road? Gary, maybe you can look it up and put it in the chat. Did they lose to Butler? I don't know if they lost to Butler. Did they lose to Mar- No, they've just beat Marquette by a million. I mean, this is college basketball. You win at home against Marquette by a million on Saturday. You go to Omaha against a very good Creighton team and get boat raced. I mean, they were never in the game. They allowed a zillion three-pointers. And does that take anything away from what UConn has accomplished this year? They could be the top overall seed come Selection Sunday. If not, they're probably the second overall seed. You know, look at Arizona. They're projected maybe as a number one seed right now. They've played better as of late, but they've taken on three or four conference road losses this year. They lost on neutral to FAU. It's hard. I mean, every team has had a, a re, kind of a head-scratching result, so to speak. Purdue goes to Nebraska. They get boat raced. They lose by 20. Um, tonight, you know, Creighton's a really good team. I mean, Creighton could be like a top three type seed. But for UConn to lose by, you know, nearly 20 points, I think is a, is a very fair point, Gary. I really do. Um, let's see here. Don says the recency bias of our fans is crazy. <laughs> Um, I said that a little bit post game, by the way, down on the radio, and I agree with you. This is a marathon with many moving parts. I'm not pleased about tonight, but there's way too much basketball left to get discouraged. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I mean, that's how I feel. That's how I feel. I mean, to to be so all in critical on one or two players when those same one or two players have had their moments within like the last ten days. Again, is that reasonable? Is that right? I mean, again, I understand it. People get upset. It was a big game. I get it. But I don't, you know, I don't think it boils down to any one player or any one player. I really don't. Um, Rye and Jin Living says, Dutch is showing confidence in the youngsters by steadily subbing them in in the nine-man rotation. Yeah, look at Miles Bird. I mean, he's on the floor with two minutes left in like a two-point game. Elijah and Miles look great in fits and starts, and I really like how Heidi plays around the basket. Yes, spot on. The battles that are won in the war <laughs> that maybe tonight is lost. You're, they're a full nine-man rotation right now. They're deeper than Utah State. Utah State had four starters play 30 minutes. One Aztec played 30 minutes tonight. Now Utah State won the game, which is what matters at the end of the day. But what happens when you're playing a second game in two days, a third game in three days? How does rotation impact the game? And it could absolutely impact the game in the Mountain West tournament. Uh, Rich says, Gary, it just goes to show that even the best teams lose on the road. Just wait for the tourney, and we might be playing in Los Angeles. Who knows? You know, I, I, I read it like everyone reads it. I look at the metrics. I look at the bracketology. Um, you, you can't live and die on it. You can't overly worry about it. If San Diego State could lock down a four seed, that's terrific. Is it the end-all, be-all? Look at 2023. No. They went through Orlando, Louisville to get to Houston. You don't know how it's going to play out. Would I prefer for them to stay local, to have the higher seed? Yes. All of it is yes, 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 yes. But I'm not kicking anything out of bed. Because if you get to the NCAA tournament, you got a shot. You just want a ticket, right? You just need a ticket to the dance to have a shot. Um, Forrest Ghost says UNLV to win the NIT. I don't know if the resume is good enough to make the NIT. I think they're in the 90s right now in the metrics. You probably have to be in like the 60s, 70s. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. It's possible by the end of the year. It's a possibility. Um, Rich says Aztec fans always take – but by the way, they're dangerous. Just because they might not be in the NIT doesn't mean they're not dangerous. They have talent. We saw it in the first meeting. It was a good game. They are capable of giving San Diego State a very good game, all they can handle in early March. Um, and who knows? I mean, they could meet again in the Mountain West Tournament. Uh, Rich says, Aztec fans always take over Vegas for the Mountain West Tourney. It will feel like a home game. No doubt. I mean, the Aztecs have been great in Vegas. Unbelievable. I mean, one of the great neutral, you know, quote-unquote, home court advantages in the country has been San Diego State in Las Vegas. Uh, Jeff says another solid outing by Heidi weird night ball just didn't seem to bounce our way and that'll happen. And, you know, some of that is a product of who you're playing and the environment you're playing in and, and everything that goes into it. But it did at times feel like that. It did at times feel like that. Okay. So you kind of lost were Kansas at Seton Hall, Kansas, obviously understandable. Seton Hall, even understandable. They didn't have clinging for that game. It was in Newark at the Prudential center. Seton Hall has been helter skelter up and down. Um, but yeah, again, no one's perfect for the, you know, surprise 50 straight years, essentially nobody's perfect 
in college basketball. Shoot, I don't think there's any one lost team. Is there a one lost team in the nation? Right now, if there is, it's failing me. I mean, Houston, Houston's got road losses in the Big 12. Obviously, the Big 12 is as good of a league as there is in the country. Ever Look at Kansas on the road, folks. They haven't been outside the AP Top 10 all year, and they have taken on some terrible road losses. 29 points at Texas Tech, lost at West Virginia. You know, I don't know what point I'm trying to prove other than to say it's hard for everyone. Have some teams been better on the road than others? Yes, but it's kind of few and far between for road dominance. And I just don't know if it's fully indicative what you're doing on the road in these hostile environments, if it's fully indicative of what you're capable of doing on a neutral floor. I guess that's my overall takeaway. Gustavo, if we play at LA for the second weekend of March Madness, it will definitely be a home game for us, like Vegas, but I prefer the matchup over the West bracket. Yeah, I've said that before. I mean, if someone told me right now that, you know, you go to Spokane, but you're getting an opponent that has the elixirs, you know, has all the answers for you. I mean, what is the what is the location really saving you from? The location doesn't play, right? The location isn't going to hit three pointers for you. So yeah, I think location matters. I think staying west is preferable. Make no mistake. That's what they want, but it's not the end all be all. And by the way, out of the Spokane Salt Lake, if it does come down to that, it may or may not. There's eight regional locations. If it's Spokane Salt Lake, what do you got? I think Spokane. The reason I say it, and I don't know, Spokane's not at elevation, is it? Um, or not near at elevation, Salt Lake. And the Aztecs have not played well at elevation. Not that other teams do, typically. But I think out of Spokane, Salt Lake, I think you take the less elevation over the elevation. Just you're watching how you have to, you know, you, you know, use a deeper rotation when you're playing at elevation. You can't play anyone 40 minutes when you're playing at whatever elevation Salt Lake City is. Uh, let's see. Eden says, thanks for having me on the radio the other day, John. That was my first time ever on air. Shout out to 760 AM. I'll win my Chicago Earth, Wind, and Fire tickets another time. Very cool. Happy to have you on. Um, Kevin says, five C, fingers crossed. Is that for the NCAA tournament? You'd rather be a five? Or you're hoping to get a five or better? Um, Eden says, I don't think losing this game will bump us off the four line. But if we lose another, there's no telling. Yeah, I don't I don't know. Again, it's all like um, someone said earlier, a moving target. There's no such thing as being on a four line right now, because the only thing that matters is selection Sunday. So like, what's the path to a four? I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe having to win these last four games of the regular season, or maybe going three and one in these last three games, then winning the Mountain West championship. You know, they're going to have to play well to secure a four seed. If they don't play well down the stretch, they won't be a four. It's as simple as that. Can they get higher than a four off a loss like this? I mean, running the table, maybe I'd be surprised. I'd have to look at the metrics and see how it plays out around them. Um, could they be lower than a, a five? Yeah, there's still a lot of basketball to be played. Like teams in non-power conferences get punished more so than teams in power conferences. San Diego State, to its credit, overcomes all that by playing really good basketball and not taking games off and not suffering losses. They shouldn't suffer, but there's still much to be determined when it comes to NCAA tournament seating. Uh, Don says at the Mountain West tournament, there is no altitude. San Diego State is the best team in the league. They will show it on the neutral court in Vegas. I think a lot of people agree with you, Don. I think that. Um, like the analytics, like Bart Torvik's site, Ken Pomeroy, when they do the whatever it's called, like who's going to win the tournament once the seeding is set and they project it out. San Diego State's going to have a very legitimate shot, but so will a lot of teams because there's so much parity within the Mountain West. There's so many good teams, so many good teams in the Mountain West. I spoke can't thank you, Rich, is 1,800 feet. So I think that's an advantage over Salt Lake. I, I don't know if – I mean, maybe you like Salt Lake because you play at elevation. If you get a non-elevation team, like you get Akron to – travel and play at elevation maybe there's an advantage there but i don't know elevation even though san diego state played it for 25 plus years to me is just just tricky i think gustavo was saying spokane is better but if the game is at salt lake we know how to play it we have been playing in elevation all year yes there, there'll be a strategy for it you're right but it's just again you, you're not playing Jaden ladee 39 minutes in salt lake city in a game can you play him 33 yeah we saw it tonight but 39 you're probably asking too much of anyone at elevation where you know a non-elevation game you know, again, you shorten up rotations typically in the NCAA tournament because it's win or go home. You know, Jaden could play 37, 38 minutes. You play a game at elevation, maybe it's more like 32, 33, 34. Which again, not having Jaden Ledee on the floor, you know, ultimately is not a not a positive for San Diego State. Um, all right, guys, I'll be back at the radio tomorrow. Hope you'll uh, join me there. San Diego Sports 760, John and Jim. You can listen on the free iHeartRadio app. You can search for John and Jim 760 on YouTube and watch the show, or you can listen on San Diego Sports 760. Of course, we'll be back with you Saturday. Pre-game coverage on the radio at 6.30, tip-off at 7, Ted Leitner on the call. 
from Fresno, California. Uh, another big one because they all are, and we'll see if San Diego State can bounce back and earn a road win. Um, thank you to Eric Lanier, our title sponsor of the wrap-up show presented by Eric Lanier at Higher Impact Financial. Please uh, do me a solid and get in contact with Eric. Set up that free 15-minute consultation. He can help you secure your financial future. Um, appreciate all you guys. Really do. Looking forward to next week when the Aztecs get back home for San Jose State. Just two regular season home games remaining. Hard to believe. Senior night and San Jose State next week. Appreciate all you guys. Really do. If it's your first time here, if you've been here, please subscribe. If you want the audio-only edition of the show, click the link in the description down below. You can get that. If you don't want the video, you want the audio because you're on the run, you can get that. Smash the like button for me. Tell someone about this channel if you wouldn't mind. We've got year-round content for Aztec fans. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at John Schaefer, J-O-N-S-C-H-A-E-F-F-E-R. And thank you for those that are here on replay. We appreciate the super thanks as well. All right, until next time, Utah State wins tonight. And Logan, they secure first place in the Mountain West, winning at 68-63. My name is John Schaefer. This has been the wrap-up show. Have a good night, guys. Thank you.